Hi everyone, it's David. Today I wanted to talk about a little bit of self-care. Today we're going to talk about trigger points and how you can use trigger point release to help yourself with recovery. Now it's not an end-all be-all or a fix everything type of situation, but sometimes people may have a little bit of resting tone or guarding in a certain muscle that may be tightening and contracting and maybe contracting a little bit more than it should be at rest. And so sometimes that can be aggravating. In the physical therapy world, we call it hypertonic. That term is usually used a little bit more in the central nervous system with strokes or traumatic brain injuries or things like that. But in the orthopedic world, it's probably more seen as guarding or uh, increased tension in a muscle at rest compared to what it should be. Normal tissue should not hurt to compress on its own but sometimes that's the case and so when you foam roll or you put pressure on a certain area and it's tender that's a little bit of what's going on whether or not it's at the muscle spindle or it's referring from a nerve or from somewhere else hard to tell without further assessment or testing but today we're going to go over a little bit of trigger point release uh, for me sometimes I get a little bit of discomfort to the lateral aspect of the hip uh, to the outside by the greater trochanter basically that trochanteric bursitis type of presentation sometimes or a lateral hamstring uh, all on the outside of the leg so today we're going to go over that a little bit I have an atlas of anatomy here to show you so if you look at the low back here now I'm going to have to go into teaching mode but I can see this you're going to look at the base of the sacrum right here and I'm actually going to flip because this is the posterior aspect but the base of the sacrum is right there, and you have the whole thing down to the coccyx. And so all the muscles from the sacrum that go to the greater trochanter, you're looking at the piriformis that runs right through there and attaches right in that region. Your gluteus medius and your gluteus minimus as well. And then on top of that whole thing, you have a shelving of your gluteus maximus. And those are your main hip extensors and external rotators, and they're important for stability reasons. And so a lot of times they get aggravated because they're maybe not strong enough to control the internal rotation torque when you're running. There's a lot of different reasons why that might be aggravated, but um, to give a visual perspective here, we have some cutouts on this page. And so that's your glute max right there. So that's the top layer, the most superficial layer. And then if you look beneath it, you have your gluteus medius. Underneath that, the gluteus minimus, and then that piriformis running there. So that's your sacrum, and that's the greater trochanter, the side of your hip. And so what we're going to try to do is we're going to try and work some trigger point release to help calm those guys down. So the reason why that works, usually when you have increased tone in a certain area or guarding in a certain muscle, they tend to respond well to low-grade sustained pressure and that seems to help calm the muscle spindle down and keep it in a less reflexive type of patterning. Uh, this is definitely one potential tool that could be in the tool belt. Like I said, this is not an end-all be-all. There's so many other factors that can go into therapy or why someone is having pain or a pain generating source, but this is something that you can do to help decrease some of the tension in the region. So what you can do is you can take any kind of firm ball, like a lacrosse ball or a spiky ball or a foam roller, really anything, and you can find that source of the, the middle of the muscle belly and put a sustained pressure into the region. And using that pressure to hold it there for a little bit of a while, as long as it's a comfortable, relatively comfortable pressure, something that's tolerable, nothing that's generating too much pain, and just leave it there. Take a couple deep breaths and start to sink into it and relax as much as you possibly can. And usually what I do is I do anywhere from about 30 seconds to a full minute, and then I'll, I'll rotate the ball to a couple of different spots, and I'll keep it there. And then if you really want to intensify it, you can put the muscle on stretch. And so with the piriformis or with any of the glute muscles, they are hip ex with the glute muscles specifically, they are hip extensors and external rotators. So what you can do is move your hip into hip flexion and external rotation or hip flexion, internal rotation, adduction, basically bringing that hip and knee up towards your chest and putting it across your body 
while putting that pressure into that trigger point. And that will further intensify it. For most people, you probably don't need to intensify it to that degree, but overall, you can play around with a lot of these concepts and see if that helps for you. So like I was saying earlier, you can use a couple of different things here. You can use a spiky ball. You can use a double lacrosse ball or a tennis ball duct taped together. This usually works pretty well in the thoracic spine or in the scapular region by the shoulder blades. Or you can even use a traditional foam roller. PlayStation controllers might work. I wouldn't recommend it. I'm also filming this during the time of March Madness, so that's also on the TV, so that's a thing. Anyways, I will show you how to do it right now. So we're going to use the spiky ball right now for the piriformis and the gluteus medius, which tend to be the two that get aggravated for me a little bit. Shout out to the Decker's X Lab. These are the SNPR Mid. They are super cozy. Uh, we're going to have a review out on that very shortly. Um, but this is what you can do. So you can take the ball, find that base of your tailbone right there, go just a little higher up, and then rotate over to the hip. Go right in between those two, and it's kind of a tender spot on a lot of people. And you can put the pressure on it. I usually start with my legs straight, and I'll support my weight on my arms, and I'll start to get into it a little bit right there. And then once I find a spot that's tender but manageable, I'll leave it there for a little while. So we'll leave it on for about 30 seconds or so, and then we'll rotate sides. And usually what I do is I keep the pressure on the region for that time, and then what I'll do is rotate my leg and start to shimmy on it a little bit more. And so I'll just hunt around and just keep finding, and I'll work on it for anywhere between two to three minutes probably for one specific muscle or region, and then I'll shift to another one. And this is something I probably do more after the run, you might be a little bit sore afterwards initially, but then usually you can feel some of the tension release as well. So, hopefully you enjoyed. Tune in for more as I torture myself.